Today I'm going to teach you about something called hoisting inside JavaScript, which is something I talked briefly about in some of the previous episodes. So today we're going to have an episode on just hoisting and how it affects the JavaScript code that we write inside our website. And we'll also talk about named functions and anonymous functions since anonymous functions and named functions are very similar to each other, which we also talked about previously in the functions episode. But because of hoisting, they behave differently. So I'm also going to sort of cover that in this episode. So as you can see in front of me here, I do already have some code inside my document. I have variable A, B, and C that has a string attached to them just so we know which one's which. And at the bottom here, I console lock the variables with a space in between them inside my console inside the browser. So as you can see, we get first, second, and third inside the browser here. Now, in order to explain what exactly hoisting is, we need to take a step back and talk about what exactly happens when we create a variable inside JavaScript. So as you can see up here, we have variable A. Let's take that one as an example. When I create this variable, we do two things. First, we declare the variable by saying we have a var a, and then second, we assign a value to it. In a previous episode, we also talked about that you don't have to assign a value to a variable immediately. You could also, if you wanted to, just declare the variable and then later assign a value to a like I just did here. Now, it's very important to know that declaring the variable and assigning a value to it is going to affect hoisting. Because when you load this code inside the browser, what hoisting is, is the browser takes all the declarations, such as variable A, B, and C, it takes it out of the code, and before it shows anything inside the browser, it takes these declarations and put them at the top of the website or at the top of the file that we have here, so you can access them at any point inside the code that you have in here. So to show an example of this, if I were to go below here, and create a variable D without assigning a value to it. And then instead, inside the parentheses here of my console log, try to access D. Then you're gonna notice we get undefined. Now, logically, the console log shouldn't know that there's a variable D inside the code because the console log is before variable D. So inside the console, inside the browser, we shouldn't get undefined because that means that it can find a variable, but there's no value assigned to it. Instead, what we should be getting logically is a reference error that says, oh, I don't know where this variable is. All written in red and everything, so we know that this is an error. But instead, we get undefined, which means that we have a variable declared inside our document, but there's no value assigned to it. And again, this shows that when I declare a variable, then the variable gets taken out of the code, placed at the top of the document, which means that the console log can't find it because the variable gets hoisted at the top of the document, it gets pulled up to the top so that the console log knows that there is a variable D. And this is what we call hoisting. So if I were to show another example here, if I were to take this variable D and assign a value to it. So if we were to say fourth inside the value, and as you can see, we only get undefined inside the console here, which is like I said, we only take the declarations out and place them at the top or hoist them to the top of the document, but we don't take the values and do it. So what I need to do here is I need to actually take the console log and place it below when we assign the value in order to see it inside the console here. Now to show another example, what I could also do is I could actually take the declaration of D and what I can do is I can actually declare variable D below the console log and then assign the value before the console log. I think I just punched the microphone there. Um, and it still gets the value inside the browser because like I said, when we declare a variable, it gets hoisted to the top. And then because I assigned the, the value before we console logged it, it still see it as valid code. So this is what we call hoisting. Now, here's the kicker. When we talk about named functions and anonymous functions, just to give an example of them, because we need to take a step back to the functions episode. I do recommend you watch it first if you haven't seen it yet. Um, if I were to just go ahead and delete what I have here and create a named function, so we can actually say we have a function. We're going to give it a name because it's a name function. I'm just gonna call this one example, parentheses, curly brackets, and then inside of here, I'm just going to return some kind of value. So I'm going to say we have a variable called a that's equal to 10. And I'm going to return a, which means that when I call on this function, this name function here, then we should be getting a or 10 inside the console. So if it were to go below here and say console log, 
console.log. And I want to console log this function called example. Like so. And as you can see, we get 10 inside the console. This makes sense. This is what we talked about previously. Now, if I were to take this function here and move it below the console log, what is going to happen when I save it? Is it going to show undefined inside the console? Is it going to give us a reference error? Or is it going to show us 10 inside the console? What do you think? When I save it, you can see we still get 10. And that's because a name function in the same way as a variable gets taken out of the code and placed at the top or hoisted to the top of the file. So we can use it at any point inside our code, which I also mentioned we could in the function episode, um, which means that we can use it whenever we want inside the code because it's been hoisted. Now, what is the downside to hoisting? Well, when we hoist anything, any sort of data inside our JavaScript, it is going to take up space inside the browser, which means that it's going to slow down the code when it gets loaded inside the browser. Not, I mean, not by a lot, but just by a little bit. And it's not something that is going to be really noticeable unless you have a lot of JavaScript running on the same page, but it does still save space for the functions and the variables inside the browser before the user actually sees any sort of content inside the website, which means if we have a lot of code, then it's going to take maybe half a second to actually see the content when it gets loaded into the browser. So as a general rule, you don't want to hoist any code inside the browser unless you have a very specific reason to do so because it's going to slow down the browser when it loads the code. So how do we avoid hoisting? Because we need to do something to avoid this. Now, what some people do is that they don't create variables out in the root of the file, like right here. If you create a variable B and set it equal to 10, now, instead of creating a variable like I just did, a lot of people, what they do is that they take variables and put them inside functions instead and use them inside the functions. Because in most cases, when you want to create a sort of function, then variables are actually used inside the function. So there's no reason to declare them outside the function if you want to use them inside a function. Just place them inside the function, which is going to be a lot better. Now, but how do we avoid functions? being hoisted. Now, this is where anonymous functions comes into place, because like I said, a named function always gets hoisted into the browser. Now, an anonymous function is actually more often used than named functions, which we just talked about here. Now, an anonymous function is basically just a function without a name attached to it. So in the previous example, you can see that we have a function called example. And if I wanted to call on this function, I just basically call on the name inside the console log. Now, an anonymous function, like I said, doesn't have a name attached to it. So if we were to create one down here, I can say we have a function, parentheses, curly brackets, and then it can have some kind of code inside of it. So we can just copy the code from up here, paste it in, Let's go ahead and change it from 10 to 20, just to see something different inside uh, the browser here. And let's go ahead and delete the previous function because we don't want to have it in here. And we're also gonna remove the variable b up here so we don't get confused inside the code. And I'm also gonna go ahead and move the function to the top here so we don't have it below the console log because then it's better to show my example here. There we go. Now, when I want to call on this function, we can't do so because it doesn't have a name attached to it. So the way we do it is by creating a variable and assigning it to the function. So what I can do here is I can say we have a variable a and just set it equal to the function. And now if I were to go down inside the console log here, I can just reference to variable A and then add a pair of parentheses behind it to say that there's a function inside variable A. And then if I were to save it, you can see that we get 20 inside the console here because now we did in fact call on this function. So what is the difference between an anonymous function and a name function? Because they behave the exact same way the only difference is that we don't give the function a name, but instead we just assign it to a variable. And when we want to call on it down here, we just do the exact same thing. We just create the name for either the variable or the function and then a pair of parentheses and then we call on it. So what is the difference here? Well, remember before when we had the name function and I placed it below the console log, it still worked because the function gets hoisted to the top of the document. If I were to take this function here and move it below the console log, you can see we get a uncaught type error, which is because it doesn't know where the function is. It doesn't even know that the function exists inside the code because we haven't hoisted the function to the top of the code so that the console log can actually see it and output it into the console. So 
This is why we want to use anonymous functions over name functions in most cases, because right now we don't hoist the function to the top of the website, which means that we don't take up a lot of space inside the website. So often anonymous functions are better used inside the code, at least if you don't want to uh, take up a lot of space inside the browser for this specific code. And again, this is a basic explanation of what exactly hoisting is and what it does when it comes to JavaScript code. So I hope you could use it for something. So I hope you got an idea about what exactly hoisting is inside a website and also about the differences between named functions and anonymous functions and when we should use which inside our code. So in the next episode, I think we're going to try and do another project because I think we need to have more projects inside these lessons here in order for you to understand how exactly we use JavaScript inside a website. So in the next episode, I will create a project. So I'm going to have to think of something that I want to show you. So I hope to see you in the next episode.